What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna do a full overview and tutorial of Audi's virtual cockpit display on my 2018 Audi S5 Prestige. I've gotten a couple requests to do this video and uh, honestly, it's one of my favorite features of this car, so I figured I'd go ahead and do it. So if you guys are new to the channel, like I said, this is my 2018 Audi S5 Prestige Coupe. Picked it up a couple weeks ago, still learning everything about it, uh, but I absolutely love it. I have a couple other videos of it on my channel if you want to check that out. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get on started. So this will vary uh, depending on the model Audi that you have, but if you go ahead and open the door, the uh, digital display will do a nice little dance there to welcome you. I think that's really cool. So here's the display. It's 12.3 uh, inches. It has uh, 60 frames per second NVIDIA processing. So the graphics and everything, especially on initial glances, look absolutely amazing. If we go ahead and just press the uh, start stop button once to turn on the accessory mode. We'll see it takes a second to boot up here. So this is the default menu screen. You can see uh, the tachometer is in the middle with the speedo. You have the date and the time on the right. And uh, this menu on the left is configurable. We'll go ahead and go through that in a second. You also have the radio information, the fuel information. I also want to make note that the coolant temperature and the uh, fuel gauge are permanent and they're sort of analog digital. They, uh, they can't be configured. They permanently sit on the uh, bottom left and right there. So on the steering wheel here, we have controls on the uh, left and the right spokes, but we're not going to be concerned with the uh, right spokes uh, controls because that controls the uh, navigation and the radio on that screen. Um, the controls on the left here are what we'll be concerned with, uh, with configuring the uh, virtual dashboard here. So the main uh, button to kind of configure everything are these two arrows here. Um, and if you go ahead and click this one to the right, you can see that you can go through various menus on the top. You see those four menus. The first one right here is kind of the trip information. And I'm scrolling with this little wheel here. You can see the traffic sign info, driver assistance. You have a ton of different uh, little menus you can go through here. So that's the first menu. If we go ahead and click the arrow to the right, you can see it goes to our radio information. And similarly, you can scroll with the little wheel here, go, go through the various stations. And uh, as you would expect, if you have an external audio source connected like Apple CarPlay or Bluetooth audio, uh, that track information will be shown in this display as well. So if we use the uh, right arrow again and go to the right, you can see that this is the directory. Um, I don't use the screen very often. I'm pretty sure that's if you have some contacts or phone numbers stored in the actual MMI here, um, but I don't use this very often. And then lastly, if we click it on the fourth menu, you can see this is the navigation screen. This is one of my favorite menus. This is probably the display that I keep it on or the configuration, I guess, that I keep it on the most. And uh, you can use the scroll wheel to kind of adjust the zoom level. That's very, very cool. And uh, arguably the coolest feature of this uh, virtual dashboard here is this view button right here. So if we go ahead and click it, you can see the full map display shows up. That is absolutely amazing. And what this view button basically does is make whatever that side menu is on the uh, left kind of full screen. So if we scroll back to the left, for example, to directory and then hit view, you can see that becomes full screen. Or if we scroll to the left again, the radio information or the trip information, all of those menus become kind of take up, well, kind of take up the entire display. And whenever menu you're in, obviously the uh, scroll wheel retains its functionality so we can go through the various menus. If we go to radio using the scroll wheel, we can go down and up to select whatever station. The directory, you can probably scroll through, through your contacts using this wheel. And then with the map, I think I mentioned before, but you can use it to uh, zoom in and out. And so in a respective menu, you can probably see those little tabs on the uh, left and the right. That corresponds to these uh, on the steering wheel. So if we go ahead and press to the right, you can see it brings up various map uh, settings. And if we go ahead and hit return and we go to the left, you can see last destinations, favorites, just kind of quick accessibility shortcuts that are really useful. And in the radio information or entertainment uh, section, you can see if we go to the left, you can change the various source that you'd like to use with the scroll wheel. And if we go to return and go to the right, you can see the now playing screen option is enabled. And lastly, on the kind of main screen or the uh, default screen, if we go to the right, you can see the additional display. This is where you can select what you'd like that little display on the left to be. Right now I have it to distance driven, but you can have it to the date, the driving time, the average speed, whatever you'd like. And uh, another cool feature that I actually just figured out on the uh, left of the uh, main screen here, you can see trip computer lap times. This is one of the coolest features. I have not used this, um, but I think it could be pretty cool. 
and then lab statistics where you can kind of store other data. And then lastly, with layout, if we go to that screen, you can see that kind of mirrors the display that we saw when we first got in the car. But if we want to go to the classic layout, which is what I think, you know, the A4s and the A5s have and kind of the non S or RS models, you can go ahead and select that layout as well. So if you go ahead and click on that, it's going to say that it's going to take a few seconds, but we'll hit yes. It's going to load the layout. So as you can see, we have the rev counter and the speedo. Now there are two big dials. Those look cool as well. We have the same functionality in the middle using the scroll wheel that we saw on the previous layout. We can go to the radio information. Still the same general theme, only now the speedo and the uh, rev counter, like I said, are two big dials. So one thing I do want to make mention if we uh, go ahead and hit view uh, if for the navigation, uh, I read on the forums that there is a 3G discontinuation. Uh, this is a 2018, so it's the last model year that has 3G. But if it did have it, it would have Google Maps actually, like a live image in the center there, as well as on the MMI. But because kind of it's being phased out uh, from Audi, those services are no longer uh, available. So we just kind of have the standard map uh, layout here. But yeah, guys, that's basically the overview and the uh, walkthrough of the Audi virtual cockpit display. This is an amazing technology. Um, they have sort of updated the graphics in recent years, um, but the functionality is still the same. You still have kind of the same buttons and everything on the steering wheel. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video going through the uh, Audi virtual cockpit display. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see with this car. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.